ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಬಿಗ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರವರ್ಸಿ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವೆದರ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ irrespective of the mind or the chitta because these worldly objects are proved to be existing only when they are illumined in the light of knowledge anything the rule is anything that which is not included in the thought or in the mind cannot be authenticated as existing therefore should we call that the objects are existing independent of the mind or the mind itself becomes the object on the basis of this the bauddha philosophy is based this is what is said kechit ahuhu jnana sah bhuhu evartho bhogyatvan sukhadivat iti ते एतया द्वारा साधारण बाधमाना पूर्वोत्तरेशु क्षणेशु वस्तु स्वरूपम एव अपन्नुवते सो हियर ओयासीन देर आर सम पीपल पर्टिक्युलरली दिस बौद्धास दोज हु आर फॉलोइंग द फिलॉसॉफी ऑफ द बुद्ध केचित आहु हु वॉट दे से सम ऑफ देम से अर्थ ज्ञान सह भू एव objects are existing only when they are illumined in the light of knowledge or the thought and therefore what they mean that if there is no knowledge illuminating the object the object does not exist this is their objection or this is their conclusion example they give bhogyatvat sukhadivat like you know the sukha the joy joy can exist only if it is included as an object in the mind joy is not something like an object then how do you prove the existence of the joy only when it is included in the thought so when we get something and if we do not know it is not giving us joy therefore like the joy or the sukha or the happiness is certified to be existing only when included in the mind so also all the worldly objects also unless they are included in the mind or the knowledge they cannot exist this is how they conclude <coughs> that the objects are not having independent existence but they are existing only in the thought therefore <coughs> what they do te etaya dwara by this kind of understanding sadharanatvam badhamana so what they do they remove the common existence of the object it is something like this you know now this is the cell phone it is seen by me so it is included in my knowledge and it is not seen by you for example so it is not included in your knowledge so can we say that because it is not included in your knowledge therefore this object will not exist see therefore this approach of the buddhist where they say jnana sah bhuhu the worldly objects exist only along with the knowledge of the object this is totally a wrong preposition therefore badham anaha purvottareshu kshaneshu vasturvep ur vastu swarupam eva apannavate because if some object is not included in the 
knowledge. Does it mean that before that the object was non-existent? It is something like, you know, the law of gravity was discovered by Mr. Newton on a particular day. Before that it was not known. Does it mean that the law of gravity did not exist before? And therefore, this preposition of the Buddhist that the jnana uh, sahabhu eva arthaha bhogyatvan worldly object exists along with the knowledge in the mind alone. This is totally wrong. And therefore, to explain how this is wrong, this 16th sutra is given. Nacha eka chitta tantram vastu Nacha eka chitta tantram vastu Tad apramanakam Tad apramanakam Tadakim syat Tadakim syat Now here the discussion is so beautiful. Nacha eka chitta tantram vastu Vastu any object is not governed and established only by one mind. Isn't it? Every object is seen by millions of minds. So, nacha eka chitta tantram vastu tada tad apramanakam. Suppose a particular object is not seen by anybody. If a particular object is not known by anybody, then the question is asked, kim tat syat tada? Then what you have to say about that object? which is not known to anybody, do you say that the object was non-existing? No. And therefore, no syat ityataha. So this cannot be accepted. Now here, there are two options taken. If you say that the object which is not included in the thought, in the mind, does not exist, and when it is included in the thought or the mind, it exists. Means what? With every thought, the object is created. And when the thought dies, the object dies. This is what we will have to say. And this is not a acceptable preposition. And second impossibility is that if, a, if an object is created with the thought and dies with the thought, then there will be two types of objects. One type of objects according to the Buddhist, other type of object according to the Sankhya. What will be the Buddhist object? Only Asha Modaka, only imaginary. Like I gave you example yesterday about the imaginary creation by the statisticians. So, like when we say, uh, let us take any nice sweet meat or any object, pizza, now when we say pizza, this word is creating the knowledge about that object. But by only the thought of pizza, our hunger is not satiated. But we require a solid object. In the same manner, <coughs> if we accept this Buddhist preposition, that the objects are created along with the thoughts, and when the thoughts disappear, there is no object, nothing exists. This will be the most uncomfortable situation. Therefore, eka chitta tantram ched vastu tada. And if you say that the object is controlled, governed, existed, or included only in one thought or one mind, rather, tada chitte vyagre niruddheva. Under these two conditions, suppose your mind is busy with something else, chitte vyagre, or niruddheva. Or by the meditation you have controlled your mind, chitta vritti nirodaha. Under these two conditions, tena aparamrishtam. So the object will not be included in the thought or the mind. Tena aparamrishtam nagrihitam. So it will not be included in the thought. Then avishayi bhutam. Therefore it will not become an object of the thought. Apramanakam. And therefore there will not be any... Uh, praman knowledge to prove that the object exists. Then in that case, asvarupam tat, should we say that the object doesn't exist? Tadanim kim syat, 
then in that case if the object doesn't exist then what is that tada kimsar and further chittena punah sambadhyam anancha kutah utpadyet and again if the chitta the mind goes and comes in contact with that particular object which was non existent the where from it will be created out of the non existent object nothing can be created and the chitta unless the object is present how it will go and come in contact with the object and therefore uh, this is totally a wrong preposition therefore there are three possibilities if we say that the object is created uh in that mind which is already containing the object it is nonsense when it is already containing the object why to create it suppose if we say that it is created by a mind which is not connected with the object but it is connected with the other object so it will create other object not this object and the third possibility is if you say that the object is created out of the nirvishaya chitta that chitta that mind which doesn't have any object so out of nothing it will create in this way all these three things become null and void and therefore the imagination of the buddhist that <coughs> the object exists only in the mind is a wrong preposition mind or the chitta and the objects they are existing independent of each other whether they are included in the mind or not it has nothing to do with the existence of the object objects exist independent of the mind therefore <coughs> another thing asya cha ये अनुपस्थिता भागा हा नॉ दिस इज अनदर फनी आर्ग्युमेंट अवर माइंड कैन कॉम्प्रिहेंड ओनली पार्ट ऑफ ए थिंग नॉ फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस सेल फोन दैट यू आर सीइंग यू आर सीइंग ओनली द बैक साइड दैट मीन दिस इज युअर फ्रंट साइड इट इज बैक साइड फॉर मी सो यू आर सीइंग दिस फ्रंट साइड यू कैन नॉट सी द बैक साइड इज इट नॉट so because you are not able to include the back side of this object in your knowledge therefore it doesn't have a back side now if there is no back side what is the reason to call something as a front side isn't it and therefore no object can be known through the thought completely exhaustively we can know only a part of it and therefore all the knowledge we will have to say that every object is existing only in part and this is not acceptable and therefore um jnana sah bhuvartah tasmat artha svatantra uh, na chitta tantra na mithya svatantrani cha chittani therefore what is the conclusion of this discussion conclusion is each object is independent of the mind which comprehends and gains the knowledge about it this is one thing second thing that this object is not chitta tantra chitta tantra means dependent on the mind for its existence that is the meaning of chitta tantra so the object can can exist independent of the presence or the absence of the mind and further na mithya nor the object is an illusion illusion means what illusion means that which doesn't exist but which appears objects exist because na sate vidyato bhavah na bhavo vidyate sata we cannot say out of the non existent the world has come into existence so the objects exist they are not illusion they are not dependent on the thoughts or the chitta or the mind and they are existing independent of the chitta or the mind and therefore prati purusham pravartante and therefore every um, purusha every person has got independent mind and tayoho sambandhat upalabdhi purushasya bhogah iti and therefore for every person there is independent mind and this independent mind comes in contact with that particular object 
and thereafter that person is able to experience or suffer the contact with that object and therefore this proposition put forward by the buddhist that the objects are existing only in the mind and if they are not included in the mind they don't exist this is not acceptable so what is the truth the truth is objects are independent of the mind otherwise the whole uh, sankhya philosophy will collapse now after having said uh, this thought continues further in the next verse in the next sutra still deeper tad uparaga pekshitva tad uparaga pekshitva chittasya chittasya vastu jnata jnatam नाउ तद उपराग अपेक्षित चित्त अनलेस दैट ऑब्जेक्ट इज इंक्लूडेड इन द थॉट और द माइंड दैट वस्तु एट दैट ऑब्जेक्ट कैन बी कॉल्ड एज नोन और अननोन दिस इज द रूल सो इन द कॉमेंट्री भगवान वेद व्यास राइट्स अयस्कांत मणिकल्पा विषया अय सधर्मक चित्त अभिसंबंध्य उपरंजयति हियर द टेक्निक इज गिवन राधर द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज गिवन हाउ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज नोन सो सपोज द ऑब्जेक्ट इज कलर एंड फॉर्म देन व्हाट एपन्स द माइंड फ्लोज आउट थ्रू द आईज and comes in contact with the particular color and form towards which it is thrown and then that mind takes the shape and the form of that particular object and then it is called as the mind is now abhiranjita it is having the impression or the reflection of that object so ayaskant manikalpa avishaya अयस्कांत इट्स वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड अयस्कांत मीन्स इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन विल बी मैग्नेट बट अयस्कांत मीन्स कांत मीन्स अबिलेवेड अयस मीन्स द आयर्न तो हू इज द बिलेवेड ऑफ द आयर्न बिलेवेड ऑफ द आयर्न इज द मैग्नेट सो हाउ द मैग्नेट एंड द आयर्न कम टुगेदर with such close proximity in the same manner the thought flowing through the respective sense organ comes in contact with the appropriate sense object so if the object is sound then the mind will flow out of the ear and comprehend that sound and the knowledge takes place if the object is the smell then the mind will run out of the granendriya the organ of smell perception catch hold of that smell and get the knowledge of that smell this is how when the mind or the thought is carrying in its womb the impression or the reflection of that object that object is not known this is how अयस्कांत मणि अक्रिया एव विषया अयोवत क्रियाशील चित्त स्वमहिम न आकृष्य स्वस्न संयोज्य तत् उपरंजयती सो दीज वर्ल्डली ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट दे आर जस्ट एक्जिस्टिंग इट इज द चित्त विच गोज ऑब्जेक्ट्स डोंट गो एनी वेयर सो द चित्त ऑफ द माइंड गोज थ्रू द सेंस ऑर्गन्स एंड इट इज इट चेंजेस इट्स शेप so the mind is constantly changing according to the object so yena cha vishayena chittam uparaktam sa vishaya jnatah so whenever our mind goes and comes in contact with a particular object only that object becomes known so yena cha vishayena chittam uparaktam sa vishaya jnatah tatah anyah punah ajnatah and at that time the other objects which are not included in the mind those other objects remain unknown in this manner 
our mind has both the things nyata and the adnyata the known and the unknown so anything becomes known if it is included in the mind and that which is not included in the mind remains unknown so anyaha punaha adnyataha vastunaha adnyata adnyata swarupatvat chittam parinami and therefore objects remain in two ways in this world which are the two ways either the object is known or the object is unknown so the chitta the mind has now this two modification parinama is modification one modification of the mind is in the form of knowledge other modification of the mind is in the form of the no knowledge ignorance this is how chitta the mind is parinami it is constantly changing according to the object <coughs> now why we are you know splitting the hair so much there is a question because unless we are very clear step by step we will not be able to come to the purusha tattva the pure consciousness and unless we come to the pure consciousness without any doubt then only we can identify this is that and then only kaivalya the ultimate emancipation is possible if not we will mistake our hallucination imagination as realization this should not happen like i told you today one lady came and she was as if on a crusade to convert people that was her purpose and such people they have this notion now i am realized now my only worry is to distribute this knowledge but nobody wants this knowledge and if i go and talk to the people they don't understand so i want somebody who understands and therefore i have come to you look here therefore this kind of funny thing should not happen and therefore this has to be known now i tell you how this funny thing happens without the study of our patanjali yoga darshan completely normally what is the understanding of yoga isn't it yoga means sitting in a particular posture for 5 10 minutes and doing eating early morning uh, the cloth or doing some kind of havan and that is all you it is not far much more than that as i told you the other day in uh, rishikesh they have started patanjali yoga darshan third pad only vibhuti if you do this thing this this will come in you then you will be able to float in the air then you will be able to bless others then this is the thing which attracts any tom dick and harry but this is not the purpose of the yoga shastra not doing this we imagine and fool ourselves that yoga means only asanas and that's it for the first yama niyama is not taken into consideration remember a few days before last time when i was here what is written in our dining hall keep silent while taking food but did you see all the so called yoga students who come a floating population how much ka 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 like a poultry farm they are sitting in front of the table and food for half an hour one hour and all nonsense goes on and on and what kind of yoga it is therefore why we are going so deep so we should not have any doubt anywhere it should be very clear what we are doing and how we should do so now what is the conclusion objects exist independent of the mind or the thoughts objects are the same mind is the one which changes its form depending upon the objects second point third point when the object is included in the mind it is known when the object is not included in the mind it is unknown and this is what was said in the last sutra vastu jnata adnyatam 
the object either is known or unknown depending upon its inclusion or non inclusion in the thought and therefore mind is a changing phenomena now after this is understood now the next step this is in the edin sutra sada jnata chitta vrittaya tat prabho ho पुरुषस्य नाओ दि संबंध भाष इज यू तदेव चित्त विषय तस् नाओ दिस् चित्त द माइंड दिस इज ऑल्सो एन ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर समवन एल्स दिस सेल फोन इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर द माइंड when the cell phone is included in the mind then it is known now this mind is also an object for someone else isn't it mind by itself doesn't know otherwise it will be something like this you know <coughs> one phone starts talking to another phone this never happens there was one child who asked me this question Swami ji, tell me, uh, what did the small phone talk to the big phone? It's all you know, stupid questions. What did the small phone talk to the big phone? I said I don't know. You see, you don't know a simple thing. The big phone told the small phone, "You are too young to be engaged," and this is what he said. I said, "Okay, I'll ask you another question. What is that? What did the chair tell the table? Because when you can ask the stupid question, I can also ask. Um, she said, 'Go away.' Then they are, 'No, no, no. Why the chair will tell go away to the table? Come near. So this fellow is not talking about." Okay, so you tell now. What did the chair tell to the table? I said, "Dumb chair never talks." <laughs> Isn't it? So, like the object is an object for the mind, the mind is also an object for the consciousness. See, and the mind is constantly changing. but the purusha tattva is unchanging it is the same and because of the changing nature of the mind parinamitvat objects remain known or unknown but the purusha being non changing is always the knower of all the changes and he himself does not undergo any change see how beautifully the whole thought is developed so purusha यू विषय तच्चिमे तुरुष न चित्तवृत्त सदा ज्ञाता तत्प्रभो पुरुष से अपरिणमिवा यद प्रभु पुरुष पिणमेद ईफ द पुरुष द कॉन्शियनेस यदि चित्तवत लाइक द माइंड इट ऑल्सो गोज ऑन चेंजिंग तथा तद्विषया चित्तवृत्त शब्दादि विषय ज्ञाता अज्ञाता सी दिस इज वेरी सटल थॉट बिकॉज द माइंड गोज ऑन चेंजिंग देर फॉर सम ऑब्जेक्ट्स रिमेन नोन सम रिमेन्स अननोन न लाइक द चित्त लाइक द माइंड इफ द पुरुष द कॉन्शियसनेस it is also parinami constantly changing then what will happen it will know some thoughts and it will not know some thoughts is it not but this does not happen purusha illuminates all the time because he is kutastha chaitanya he is unchanging reality therefore yadi chittavat prabhu api purusha parinamet ततहा तद्विषया चित्तवृत्तया शब्दादि विषय ज्ञाता अज्ञाता बट दिस इज नॉट सो देर फोर मनसा तो सदा ज्ञातम 
but the mind is always known by the consciousness or the purusha. So, tat prabho ho purusha sya aparinatmat aparinamitvam anumapayati. And therefore, it is finally proved. What is proved? Mind is a constant changing phenomena, but all the changes of the mind are illumined by the purusha, the conscious principle, which is never changing. It is the kutastha chaitanya. It is the unchanging conscious reality. See how we have come now? From the objects, we have come to the thoughts. From thoughts to the mind. Now this mind is parinami, changing, not changing. And because of the changes in the mind, object becomes known or unknown. Now this mind is an object for the consciousness. But the difference between the mind as the uh, seer, knower of the objects and consciousness as the knower of the mind, what is the difference? The difference is mind keeps on changing according to the objects and because of that objects become known and unknown but the consciousness which is illuminating the mind is the same and therefore never there is a time that the mind is known or unknown by the consciousness because consciousness is unchanging this is the ultimate analysis and that is why you know all of us unknowingly practice this what is that we want to attain freedom from change isn't it so even the dullest person in the world if you talk to him about meditation what he will think sitting quiet now what is the sitting quiet from the changes coming to the changeless reality and as long as we are under the influence of the changes, there is only tragic existence. There cannot be bliss. In the deep sleep, there are no changes. See? In the waking experience, there are changes. Sometimes you get the food of your choice. Sometimes you don't get the food of your choice. When you get, ha-ha. When you don't get, hoo hoo changes. But once you are in the deep sleep, there is nothing like a deeper deep sleep and lighter deep sleep and good deep sleep and bad deep sleep. There are no changes. Same thing. Because the unchanging reality is our essential nature. And therefore, Purusha Tattva is a parinami and the Chitta is parinami. These are the two distinctions between the mind and the consciousness. Now, Syad Ashanka Chitta Meva Swabhasam Vishayabhasancha Vainashikanam Chittatma Vadinam Bhavishyati Agnivat. Here is another doubt raised. All doubts, doubts, doubts. And all these doubts are coming only from the Buddhists. The reason is Buddhists do not accept Ishvara. They do not accept Purusha. Therefore, they have to struggle and struggle and struggle only at the level of the thought. They are not ready to go beyond the thought. And therefore, even their uh, Nirvana is only a thought process. They are not ready to transcend the limitations of the thought. Therefore, here one uh, more doubt is taken up for discussion. There are those people who are Chittatmavadi. Chittatmavadi means what? Those who consider mind as the self, mind as the soul, mind as the consciousness, mind as the reality. So for those Chittatmavadi, they are also Vainashikas. Vainashikas means those who believe only in the destruction and creation of the mind. So what they say? Chittam eva svabhasam vishaya bhasancha according to them chitta is not only illuminating the worldly objects after including them in their womb but the chitta is also illuminating itself svabhasa and vishaya bhasancha 
एग्जाम्पल दे गिव इज अग्निवत लाइक द फायर फायर इल्यूमिनेट्स अदर्स एज वेल एज इल्यूमिनेट्स इट सेल्फ इन द सेम मैनर द चित्त इज इल्यूमिनेटिंग द वर्ल्डली ऑब्जेक्ट्स एज वेल एज द चित्त इज इल्यूमिनेटिंग इट सेल्फ एंड देर फोर वेर इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ द कॉन्शियसनेस वेर इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ द पुरुषा और द ईश्वरा दिस इज देयर ऑब्जेक्शन Now this objection is rejected in the nineteenth sutra. Na tat swabhasam drushatva. Na tat swabhasam drushatva. No, what you are telling is not acceptable to Sankhya philosophy because na no, na tat swabhasam. It cannot be self-illumined. Why it cannot be self-illumined? Drushatvat, because it is an object of knowledge for the consciousness, the purusha. Therefore, when the mind is or the chitta is illumined by the purusha, so it is the drushya padartha. And how a drushya padartha will be the self-illumined? It cannot be. This is what is said. Yatha itarani indriyani shabda deshche drushtvat na swabhasani tatha manaha pratte tavyam. Just like you know, all the sense organs. Yatha itarani indriyani shabda deshche drushtvat. So all the sense organs, as well as the objects of the sense organs. All of them are the objects of knowledge for the mind. No swabhasani, they are not self-illumined. In the same manner, tatha manaha api pratyetavyam, and therefore mind also has to be understood the same way. It is something like when the object, color, and form is illumined by the eyes. Eyes are able to illuminate the object. But eyes cannot illuminate themselves. See, try to see the eyes by your own eyes. You cannot see them because the eyes are only inert. They do not have saprakashatva. They are not self-illumined. So. The uh, kind of example that you have given, agnivat, like the fire, which is illuminating others as well as itself. Atra cha agni na drustanta ha. Now here the example that you have given is a wrong example. How? Nahi agni atma swarupam aprakasham prakashayati. The agni, the fire, uh, does not illuminate its own. Unillumined aspect. So, no agni atma swarupam aprakasham prakashayati. Therefore, like um, fire is also illumined by the eyes. If there are no eyes, the fire has not been illumined. So, when the fire is illumined by the eyes, how the fire will know by itself? It cannot be. And therefore, if a person who is by birth blind, who has never seen light, he will understand fire means only that which gives heat, because he has not seen. Therefore, the fire is only para prakasha, is able to illuminate others. It is not self-illumined. Now, ayam prakasha cha prakasha prakasha sanyoge drishtaha. न च स्वरूप मात्रे अस्ति संयोग एंड दिस लाइट ऑफ दिस अग्नि द फायर अयम प्रकाश 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 संयोगे दृष्ट वेन दि लाइट फॉल्स ऑन द पर्टिक्युलर ऑब्जेक्ट देन ओनली इट इज नो नॉट अदरवाइज इन द सेम मैनर न च स्वरूप मात्रे अस्ति संयोग बट दिस Is not existing in its own self. Therefore, it is not self-illumined. 
फर्दर किंच स्वात्मा भाषम चित्तम इति अग्राह्यमे व कस्य चित एंड इफ यू से दैट दी चित्त द माइंड इज सेल्फ इल्यूमिन्ड देन इट कैन नॉट बी नोन बाय एनीबडी बिकॉज़ इट इज सेल्फ इल्यूमिन इति शब्दार्थ हा दिस इज व्हाट इज द मीनिंग देयरफॉर स्वाभास न पराभासम तद्यथा स्वात्म प्रतिष्ठाम आकाशम न पर प्रतिष्ठम इत्यर्थः देयरफॉर लाइक द स्पेस इज एग्जिस्टिंग इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ अदर्स इन द सेम मैनर द फायर इज इल्यूमिनेटिंग इटसेल्फ इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ अदर्स इज नॉट एन एक्सेप्टेबल प्रपोजिशन टू अस देन हाउ इट इज सत्वानाम प्रवृत्ति ही स्वबुद्धि प्रचार प्रति संवेदना पीपल आर एंगेज इन टू वेरियस काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी ओनली वेन दे हैव नोन समथिंग थ्रू द माइंड दिस इज वॉट इज सीन दृश्यते देर फोर द मूवमेंट और द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ द बीइंग्स इज ओनली आफ्टर दे हैव कॉन्टेक्टेड द वर्ल्ड थ्रू द माइंड एंड ऑल्सो वेन द माइंड इज मॉडिफाइड that modification of the mind is known by the consciousness the purusha and therefore we say kruddho ham bhito ham amutrame ragah amutrame krodah iti etat therefore the conscious purusha he is knowing all the modification of the mind and then he says now i am angry no i am angry is not said by the mind i am angry is said by then the anger became known to the purusha and the purusha becomes identified with that and then i am angry thought is explained therefore swa buddhi grahane etad iti na yuktam therefore buddhi cannot know by itself unless it is illumined in the light of consciousness therefore that purusha is the one which is swayam prakashita self illumin because he is illumining not only the presence but also the absence of the thought and can never experience its own absence it is not dependent on the presence or the absence of the thought and therefore the purusha tattva is self illumin self establish but buddhi the intellect or the mind has to go in search of the object modify itself take that particular shape and the form then only it can know the object but the purusha does not go anywhere the purusha doesn't have to modify itself without getting involved with the thought the purusha is able to merely illuminate and all the time unlike the buddhi and therefore this purusha tattva he is without any modification and this prakasha the light in the intellect is a kriya it is an action purusha is consciousness it is not an action so illumination of the worldly objects by the intellect is an action an illumination of the intellect by the consciousness is the swabhava is its nature it is not an action this is the basic difference now in the 20th sutra the teacher goes further eka samaye cha eka samaye cha ubhaya anavadharanam ubhaya anavadharanam now at the same time now this objection is what the chitta is both illuminating others and itself this is not acceptable why because ek samay at the same time both the things are not possible what are the both the things knowing the outer object as well as knowing itself both the things are not possible how this is this is said in the bhashya uh एक क्षण एट द सेम मोमेंट स्वपरूपारण स्वूप वॉट इज द नेचर ऑफ द चित्त इट्स एंड परूप ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट न युक्त साइमलटेनियली द माइंड कैनॉट नो इट्स एज वेल एज द अदर 
object and according to the bauddha philosophy the chitta is created at every moment it illumines and disappears illumines and disappears this is how it is called as there is a continuous flow of the thoughts and every thought creates the world and disappears this is their philosophy therefore now here the question is raised yad bhavanam sa kriya eva tadeva cha karakam now when this object is illumined by the chitta the chitta is focus on the object thereafter the chitta is focusing itself on itself then the object will be drawn and in this manner both the things are not possible simultaneously therefore according to buddhists they say the doership the knowership and the action all these things are over in one go in the thought and this is how this kshanika vadi they have accepted this principle therefore ataha kshanikatva siddhantad chitta swarupa avadharanam therefore these two things when the chitta is kshanika it is appearing for a moment and disappearing immediately how it will know itself and everything else and therefore that chitta which is uh, accepted as self illumined and illuminating others is not accepted by the sankhya philosophy syan matihi swara swarasa niruddham chittam chittantarena samanantarena gruhyate iti now there is another school of buddhist thought what they say that that chitta which is created at a particular moment when it dies immediately it hands over the whole information to the next chitta which is being born and that is called as samanantara samanantara means immediately born after the death of the first thought here chitta means the thought so swarasa niruddham chitta all the rasa all the experience all the qualities all the attributes which are contained in that thought they are immediately passed on to the next thought by this chitta at the time of death and this is how the thought is a continuous one or the experience is a continuous one this is what they say you have to remove this doubt the 21st sutra is taken that this is also a totally wrong understanding this cannot happen what is that chittantara drushe buddhi buddhe buddhi buddhe ati prasanga ati prasanga smruti sankarascha smruti sankarascha this is also very funny funny thought चित्तांतर दृशे बुद्धि बुद्धे अति प्रसंग वॉट इज सेड इन दिस थॉट फर्स्ट थॉट इज इल्यूमिंड बाय द सब्सिक्वेंट थॉट सो द फर्स्ट थॉट हैज बिकम द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ नॉलेज एंड द सेकेंड थॉट हैज बिकम द नोअर ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट एंड इफ यू से दिस मीन्स वॉट दिस इज ऑब्जेक्ट नोन बाय द थॉट एंड this thought which is knowing the object is known by the next thought ati prasanga ati prasanga means what now how long will you go back see now what will happen first thought has seen this is a cell phone the second thought now what it is doing this is a cell phone and this is a cell phone is known so for the second thought there will be two things to be known then the third thought what will be the third thought now this is the cell phone this is known by the first thought and this is known by the second thought and the second thought knows that this is the cell phone and this is a cell thought and this will be known by the third thought See how many things will accumulate, 
एंड इन दिस मैनर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज बुद्धि ही बुद्धि ही अति प्रसंगा दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अति प्रसंग मीन्स द फैलसी ऑफ इन्फिनेट रिग्रेस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अति प्रसंग समथिंग लाइक यू नो वेदर एक फर्स्ट और द बर्ड फर्स्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अति प्रसंग इफ यू से द एक फर्स्ट देन द क्वेश्चन कम्स वेयर फ्रॉम द बर्ड हैज कम If you say the bird first, then the question comes: Where from the egg has come? So therefore, this is anavastha dosh. This is a fallacy. So then the second thing: smriti sankaraha. Now, what is the smriti sankaraha? Ghatam janami first. I know the thaw a pot. Thereafter, after having known the pot. then the next thought what it will do uh, patam janami first thought says i know the pot the second thought knows the pot or the in the first thought knows the pot second does know the cloth patam now see the confusion first thought has known the pot second thought has known the cloth plus घटम जाना भी बिकॉज दैट नॉलेज इट इज बी ट्रांसफर्ड देन द थर्ड वन दिस इज व्हाट इज सेड हियर घट ज्ञातृ चित्तम जाना भी सो फर्स्ट आई नो द पॉट एंड देन आल्सो आई नो द माइंड ऑफ द नोअर ऑफ द पॉट एंड इन एडिशन टू दैट आई नो द क्लॉथ नो व्हाट विल बी द नॉलेज ऑफ द थर्ड थॉट घटम जाना भी and the one who knows the ghata that mind also i know and then the pot i know and i also know that mind which knows the pot and also that mind which has known the pot also and the cloth also see how much it becomes smriti sankara there will be an admixture of memory so suppose you have to remember one suddenly the whole thing will come in front of you whether you want or you don't want and therefore in these two uh, objections therefore this samanantara chitta is not the philosophy accepted and when it goes further objections are raised regarding what is the meaning of uh, liberation or nirvana so i am reading the bhashya athachet if we say chittam chittantrena griyet the first thought is known by the second thought buddhi buddhihi kena griyate then the question is that a thought is known by whom sapi anyaya natural if one thought is known by the second thought then who knows the second thought that is known by the third thought then the third thought is known by whom that is known by the fourth thought so buddhi buddhi kena gruyate sapi anyaya sapi anyaya sapi anyaya iti ati prasanga this is the meaning of ati prasanga now smriti sankarascha तो यावंतो बुद्धि बुद्धिवान अनुभवा तवत स्मृत प्राप्नुवंती तत्संकराश्च एक स्मृति अनवधारण चैम बुद्धि प्रति संवेदित संवेदीन पुषम अपलवती अपलभ्य सो बाय दिस वैनाशिकाज देन व्हाट विल हैपन in this manner there will be a huge chain of various memories and it will create a great confusion and sarvam eva akuli krutam and it will create the most pathetic condition tetu bhuktru swarupam yatra kvachan kalpayantaha nyayena sangachante and therefore when they don't accept the purusha as the experiencer of all these things they are not talking sense दे आर टॉकिंग नॉन सेंस न्याय न संगत चंते एंड देर आर समीपल केचित 
दे आर विज्ञानवादी बौद्ध सत्व मात्र भी परिकल्प्य अस्तिच सत्व यहां एतान पंचकंदान प्रतिसंधाती देर आर सम पीपल हु से दैट द चित्त इज ऑल्सो काल्पनिक एंड इट इज एक्सेप्टेड एज अ फ्लो ऑफ थॉट इट इज द एग्जाम्पल दैट दे गिव इज वेन यू लिफ्ट ए ग्लास ऑफ वॉटर फ्रॉम द रिवर एंड पोअर इट बाय देन ऑलरेडी द रिवर हैज फ्लोन सो रिवर इज ए कंटिन्युएशन ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ वॉटर इन द सेम मैनर Every moment the thought comes and go, thought comes and go, thought comes and go. This is how the chitta is kshanika. It is non-existent, but it appears to be because of the continuity. Now, for such people, the <coughs> meaning of nirvana or liberation is taken into discussion. And what they say? They say that <coughs> all the differences are because of the panchaskanda. Now we need not go into those details of the Buddhist philosophy. So ultimately, we come to this conclusion: Sankhya Yoga Astu Pravadaha Swashabdena Atma Purusham Eva Swaminam Chittasya Bhuktaram Anupayanti. So ultimately, the Sankhya philosophy brings to a very clear understanding that Purusha is the experiencer. Remember, in our Bhagavad Gita, thirteen chapter, we have seen Purusha ha Bhuktrutve Hetu Uchchate. Purusha ha Prakrutis Thohi Bhuktrutve Hetu Uchchate. So the Purusha, the consciousness, is the experiencer, and Prakruti, the Chitta, is only the means, Karana Hetu Uchchate. In this manner. Having proved, so how this purusha tattva is the illuminator, witness, or the drashta of this chitta? This is now said in the twenty-second sutra, and this sutra will tell us how the purusha sutra tattva is totally different, and it has. Um, independent existence from this chitta and it is the purusha tattva which is to be ultimately reached by dissolving the prakriti or the chitta and this is the real meaning of the kaivalya this is what you will see you know in this vidyanavadi bauddhas their liberation is so peculiar they are say uh, how they are Called as anatma vadi, don't believe in the atma. What they say? Tene va yukta virudhe na prakare na skandha na mahanirveda ya viraga ya raga rahitya ya prashanta ya anutpada ya guru ho anti ke brahmacharyam charishami. They say we go to the guru and practice brahmacharma. All austerities. इतिउक्त्वा हैविंग सेड दिस पुनः सत्वस्य सत्वम् एव अपनुवते एंड अगेन दे सेड देर इज नथिंग लाइक सत्व और द माइंड इफ द माइंड इज शनि का टेम्पररी व्हाट फॉर यू गो टू गुरु टू कंट्रोल द माइंड दैट विल इज टेम्पररी एंड नॉट ऑल द टाइम अवेलेबल व्हाट विल यू कंट्रोल दैट देयरफॉर दे आर एक्सेप्टिंग द चित्त ऑन वन साइड But they are not accepting the chitta on the other side. This is how these are the three, four philosophies of the Buddhist approach on yoga shastra, and this was negated. Now here after the next topic begins from the twenty-second sutra that we will take in our next class. Sri Krishna Narayana Govinda. Mm, who will sing sing ama jaya durge jaya durge mahisha vi mar di ni jaya durge mahisha vi mar di ni jaya durge Jaya Durge, Jaya Durge. Mahishavi Mardi, Jaya Durge. 
महिषाभिमानी जय दुर्गे मंगलकारिणी जय दुर्गे जगत जननी जय जय दुर्गे मंगलकारिणी जय दुर्गे जगत जननी जय जय दुर्गे जय दुर्गे जय दुर्गे महिषा विमार दिनी जय दुर्गे वीरा पाणी पुस्तक धारिणी अम्बा जय जय वाणी जगदम्बा जय जय वाणी वेद रूपिणी साम गायिनी वेद रूपिणी साम गायिनी अम्बा जय जय वाणी जगदम्बा जय जय वाणी जय दुर्गे जय दुर्गे महिषा विमार दीदी जय दुर्गे मंगलकारिणी जय दुर्गे जगत जननी जय जय दुर्गे जगत जननी जय जय दुर्गे जय दुर्गे जय दुर्गे महिषा विमारदनी जय दुर्गे ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओं